Hey guys, here's the second part of the video. This one we're going to start uh, colorizing this uh, black and white photo. And I've gone through and cleaned her up. All I really did, guys, was I used the clone tool and a little bit of the healing brush. So you can see kind of before and after and kind of fixing up a little bit. And as you can see too, I didn't get rid of every single little tiny scratch on this or every little piece of dirt. Because an old photo should look, well, old. So let me show you guys how to colorize a photo. Now, some of you guys might have different techniques. As long as the end result looks like a, a really nice kind of tinted, uh, colorized black and white, I don't really care how you get there. I'm going to show you the way I do it. Uh, probably, I think, is one of the easiest ways to do it, and you have a lot more control. So what I'm going to do is come down here to your adjustments, okay? And I'm going to click down on Hue Saturation. Okay, so when your hue saturation is open, just kind of put the panel over here, and you're going to click this Colorize button. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to do her doll's sash in red. So I just kind of come over here, and you can see by sliding this, you have all these different colors. So I'm going to put it all the way down on red, and I'm going to saturate. I want nice, good, bright red. Okay, and you can lighten it or darken it. So I'm going to kind of play around with it. This is the color I want. Okay, so you can see that the whole image though is now completely red. Well, all I have to do here is fill this mask with black. And you can go to Edit, Fill, Foreground Color, and it gets rid of it because now this black mask here is hiding the hue saturation. And if I grab my brush and I paint white, I've switched these two colors and I paint white, it's going to reveal that color. See? And I just come along and I paint the area that I want red. Okay? So if you go out of the boundaries a little bit, that's fine. This is why I like using masks. Because if I hit X on my keyboard, you can see my foreground and background switch. Okay, so if I go a little bit over, I can just touch it up, paint it back. Okay, what I like about using hue saturation is that there is a way that you can do like a color, okay, solid color, you can do that and go in there and paint. But I like to do this because if I don't like red, I just bring up the uh, hue saturation adjustment layer and you can actually come in here and change the colors so make sure these are both visible watch the color down here if I can change I can now change it so if I like no I like the blue it looks better I can change that color okay and this is one, one of the few options where you can do this okay but I like the red now what I'm going to do though is I think that red is a little too bright so I'm just going to dump down the opacity of it. Remember I'm just trying to get the effect of tinting it and you see now this is just kind of tinted. Okay, Now I want to do the doll's hat so I'm going to do blue so I do the same thing. Okay, Come down to hue saturation, click colorize, and try to find maybe a blue that I like. I like that, kind of a dark blue. I want to saturate a little bit more. It's really up to you. Okay? Same thing. I fill that with black. Edit, fill, foreground color. And it makes everything go away. And you can still see this one. That's what's kind of cool about it. Come over, grab my brush, switch the color. So I'm just hitting X on the keyboard and paint the doll's head or hat. Okay. Go in there and just kind of paint that. Okay, so there's blue. Okay. And then I can dump down the opacity if I just want to tint it. I can come back there and change the color if I want. Do a different color. Okay. This is why I like using hue saturations. I can go back in later and kind of a, a cool 
part about using hue saturation is let's say I'm over on this brick part here. I've used red somewhere else. So if I click back on this, and this is always good to name like what color it is. Blue, red. So over here, if I paint white on these bricks, see? Now the bricks are red. The only problem you're gonna run into here, guys, is if you know you want your bricks a different red than the hat. Okay, then you're gonna run into it. Let's say I want his pants to be blue. I come over here and paint his pants blue. So I've already used it one other place. And by doing it on one of these masks too, so you can go in there and paint and you can still fix everything up later too. Okay? So let's say I want to do her face, the skin tone. Skin tones, I'll be honest with you guys, they're tricky. So same thing before, hue saturation, colorize. I try to find maybe like a, somewhere between red and orange. You'll get kind of this skin tone. You know, I desaturate, I just want a tint, especially when it comes to skin tone. Same thing here. This time I'm gonna switch, hit Command Delete, or I mean Alt Delete, and it fills it with black. Instead of having to go up to Edit, Fill, uh, Alt Delete fills with foreground, Command Delete fills with background. So I hit X and paint the skin tones. And in, you know, if once you get the skin tone in, okay, then you can do some other, this kiddo here. If they have black hair, here's a word to the wise. If something is white or black, don't try to colorize it. It doesn't really look too good. Why? If it's white or black, it doesn't have color in it anyways. And if they look a little jaundiced, you can go in there and kind of play around with this a little bit. See, there we go. That looks a little bit better. Then I fade the opacity down. So it's just tinting their faces, see? You don't want to overdo it, especially when it comes to skin tones, okay? Less is definitely more. See the old man here? I'm not gonna even bother doing his beard. I say, oh, I went down, remember, X. Go in there and fix it up a little bit. X, switch back. And then I get his face too, okay? So this one you'd name skin. And if you haven't guessed it by now, uh, you're gonna have a lot of layers, okay? One thing I like to do too is that people's skin tones aren't just one color. So if you wanna go in there and kinda do a, um, I like to sometimes put a little red in there. So I'll go into the red and with the white brush, but this time I'm gonna turn the opacity down to that brush to like 11%. And I just do a little touch up on his cheeks. It might not seem like a whole lot right now, but in the printed one, it'll look good. Just add a, adding a little more depth of color into it. You just keep clicking and you can kind of slowly see, I'm just adding a little bit of extra color into their skin. Okay. And you go and paint the wood brown and the green grass. If I was down here, I create a new hue saturation, uh, colorize. Pick a nice green, saturate a little bit. Alt delete. I'm still on my paintbrush, which is B on your keyboard. Switch it. Make a pretty good sized brush. And come in here and colorize it. And it's like, oh, Dave, nothing's happening. Remember, it kept that opacity setting, so I just have to pump that all the way back up. I make some green grass. Now this looks like neon green, so I'm gonna go in there and I paint a little bit. I always kind of test it out, kind of see what it's gonna look like, and then come over to my hue saturation, kind of make it that, lighten it a little bit, so you just a tint of that green. You don't want to overdo it, okay? So we zoom back out, and you can see how slowly and surely I'm gonna fix it, colorize it. You have lots of these hue saturation layers. I'll just tell you right now. You're probably gonna have about 10 different ones or more. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.